what the exercise is because um, when the Commonwealth Games was on in Queensland only a little more than a year ago, there was a real eye-opener to us as Gideons. Quite a number of Gideon people travelled from around Australia to go to the Gold Coast to help in the personal witness and testimony to people out on the streets there as well as placing Bibles in the accommodation areas and offering them. But in that street witness, you would be amazed if you had been one of those people there and, and just realised just how many people were keen to stop and listen as we approached them. The normal approach was to take a little testament like this one, you'd have probably a whole bundle of them with the Gideon person, they would take that <coughs> and then uh, they would engage the person in conversation. The remarkable thing was that during the Commonwealth Games, so many people who would not normally talk about Christianity or about Jesus Christ or his claims in their lives, they just opened right up. There was one of the Gideons, he was talking to three German visitors. Now Germany's not noted for its great evangelistic zealous attitude within the Christian community. And yet here were three German visitors and within one hour, those three people had continued to ask questions out of the Bible from the Gideon and talked until at the end of the hour, each one of them was ready out there on the side of the street to just kneel down and ask Jesus Christ to forgive them and to come into their heart and life. But that's just the beginning. From there also, there were other similar situations. <coughs> Michael was a lawyer. And he looked troubled. And just before he met the Gideon, uh, he said he had had four near-death experiences. And yet, he didn't know anything about what happened when we died. And he was starting to get worried about it. He had no concept that any one of us human beings could actually have a direct relationship with the living God. And when he discussed and talked with the Gideon there and shared from the word of God, it just made a huge difference to his life. Another man was saying he needed to know a bit more about the Bible. He said, my two girls came home from school and they were asking me, did I believe in evolution? And he said, well, I don't know. I just presumed that's, that's the reality. That's the fact of science. And they said, well, our RE teacher has been discussing the question of evolution with us. And... Uh, we need to try and come to a decision and think about it. He decided there and then that he would need to go and get a copy of the Bible and read and see what it said and compare that uh, with what was being said in the media about evolution. There were so many people bringing issues like that. <coughs> Zoe was just a young teenage girl who came and asked the Gideons as visiting people, could they help her financially? She did look as though she was in distress and as they took her round to the Maccas not far away and they paid for food for her, they engaged her in conversation about Jesus Christ. And by the time the Maccas had cooked her breakfast and brought it round, then she was ready also to kneel at that table and ask Jesus for forgiveness for her life and to come into her life. And then turn to the Gideons and say, can you pray 
for my home situation. And only then did she open up and say her mother was an ice addict, her father had no interest in her and wouldn't do anything for her. <coughs> and this was not the first morning that she'd had to leave home without having anything to eat. There are so many people in situations like this, Chris and Jono and Alana. These were three people who came up to the Gideons. They spoke to them. Chris was, he claimed that he was a Christian. He was using ice. He clearly didn't understand what it meant to be a really a new creation, a new person when we come to Jesus Christ. Then Jono, he had quite obviously been drinking that morning before they met him. He said, oh, I'm just a prodigal. My father's a minister down in Melbourne. He said, I, I, I've got no hope. But he engaged in conversation too. And they turned to Alana and said, she's the grandmother for all these street kids round here. And then it turns out that Alana herself is a street woman. All these people accepted scriptures. All of these people read the scriptures and allowed God to speak to them that day. Now I can't imagine that happening 50 years ago in Australia. There is a tremendous change. There were five Fijian athletes who took copies of the scriptures and five Sri Lankan medical support team who took scriptures. And when it comes to people coming from Africa, that was incredible. There were whole athletic teams, mixed Christian background, animist background, Muslim background, and everyone on the team took a scripture. It is just such an openness to consider the, the true claims of Jesus Christ and the reality of the living God. But it wasn't just during the Commonwealth Games or just up in Queensland. It's the same down here in Sydney. Jaheen is one of our Gideons who's in the uh, Homebush Bankstown area. And he was doing some street witnessing, just taking a bundle of these testaments out with him and going to meet people on the street and talk with them. <coughs> he met a couple of Muslim people and as he talked to these two men, uh, they said, uh, look, we would like to read because we really believe that if we read this, that it will change our lives and we need a change. When I first started helping in the Gideon distribution in Sydney TAFE in Aldermo, Every year for something like six, seven years in succession, we experienced during the distributions Muslim people who came simply to disrupt and try and engage us in flippant conversation and argument and distract us from offering Bibles to students coming through. The last three years, we have not had one advance like that from any Muslim person. Last July, when I was at one of the gates at the Aldermo Tate, that this tall fellow who didn't sort of impress me as likely being a Muslim at all, a very strong, youthful young man, and uh, he accepted the testament I offered to him, one of these green testaments, and hesitantly, and said, you know, I'm a Muslim, I'm not sure if I should take it. 
And then when I pointed to the fact that the one they call the greatest of prophets, Isa, as Jesus is known in Arabic, that the actual words he spoke are all printed in red. I said, you can read the actual words that came from his lips. And he was really glad to talk a little bit more and then go on into the tape. He was so pleased. You could see the, the relief and the happiness that he could take that scripture and be feel free to read it and to let it speak to him and let Jesus speak to him in his life. Brothers and sisters, there's a huge change in people's attitude, even here in Sydney, in just the last five years. And that's why I chose the reading in 2 Corinthians because it speaks at the end that now is that moment of opportunity. It's not only that when God speaks to us in our hearts, now is the opportunity for us to respond, but also we today, now is our opportunity to share that glorious message with other people. And there is an openness and an opportunity Two or three of us in the Gideons joined with two or three people from the Belvoir Street Baptist Church in Surrey Hills. And late last year, we went out just outside of Central Station and we started talking to people as we met them and offering them a testament and sharing with them. Just in that brief time, there was a Hindu man who said, I am finished with Hinduism and I want to know the truth. Give me time to read through your scripture and really take it in and understand. There was a Malaysian man, presumably of Muslim background, who said, I have no interest in any religion, but I wish I knew the truth. And as he talked with the Gideon who was talking with him, he read through what Jesus says and read through how he was a sinner and yet how God so loved him that he gave his only son to die for him. And as he, they discussed together, he there bowed and asked Jesus to come into his heart to forgive him and to give him a new life. He had to leave to return to Malaysia the next morning or midday. But before he returned, he arranged to meet with that Gideon in the, in the morning, have a coffee together and discuss what he had just done in asking Jesus into his heart and life so that he could go back with, to Malaysia with a better understanding of his new commitment to Jesus Christ. There were ladies who looked serious and they were talking to me. And then I found that one of them was going in for surgery the next day to hospital. They simply had a formal faith in the church. And they didn't have the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, there are so many people all around us who are open to receive the gospel. Just in one hour, if you who pledge to join in discipleship and want to reach out and be disciples for Jesus, if you give a little time like that and just get out there and share about Jesus, it's amazing what God will do. There is a new attitude, and this is worldwide. Our nearest big country to us is Indonesia. 260 odd million people. You know, 10 years ago, if the Gideons were giving out scriptures in Indonesia, 
then they would have to distinguish between Muslim background students and non-Muslim students. Today, even last year, John Lane, one of our Gideons, was over there helping with the Indonesian Gideons in presenting scriptures to people uh, in Sumatra. And in that uh, centre of Medina in Sumatra, every school that they went to, and there were dozens of them, every school, the principal asked them, don't just give these Bibles to these students, tell them how they can become Christian. Tell them why you're here offering them this scripture. Explain it to them. Now, we could never have imagined that only just a decade ago. There is an openness and an opportunity. There are hundreds of thousands of students in Indonesia who are every day, every week, every month in these last few years turning to Jesus Christ. There's a tremendous opportunity worldwide. I don't know if anybody knows um, David Fong. He uh, lives in Queensland. He's a Gideon up there. Probably nobody has heard of him before. <laughs> but he's done an extensive amount of, of assistance ministry with the Gideons, going at his own expense to different African countries uh, sharing and giving out scriptures and witnessing to people. David Fong was at the Commonwealth Games and he met this African man, Saha Dauda. Now, Saha's father was a high official in the Sierra Leone government. His grandfather had once been the king of Sierra Leone. Saha so himself was educated um, overseas as well as in Africa. He was well informed in English, in Arabic. He was fluent in all those languages as well as his own. And he was made an imam at quite a young age and he was in charge of the um, Muslim teaching in his area of Sierra Leone, which was now declared a Muslim state. Now, he was highly respected as a teacher of Islam. He had one problem which troubled him greatly, and he had no answer. He would be explaining the Quran and teaching people all day and they would be very grateful. And then when he returned home, night after night at home, he would be troubled with demons and horrible nightmares. And he just could not understand how this could be when he was so faithfully following Allah. One day when he got home, he was on his own in the house. And suddenly there was a brilliant light filled the room. And he felt that there was a person enshrined in that light, but he couldn't see the person. And he called out to the person, who are you? And then he heard a voice answering back to him, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, this seemed rather strange, but somehow, in contrast to all his previous supernatural experiences which had been terrifying and frightening to him, this experience was comforting and gave him warmth and a sense of companionship and love. The next day, he went out onto the street, and as he was going out, a man was passing him who was giving away Bibles. 
This was one of the Gideons in Sierra Leone. He gladly accepted the Bible, feeling that somehow this was connected to the previous night. And when he got home and he opened the Bible and he started reading, there he saw John 14, 6. No one comes to the Father except through me. Knowing that these were the words that Jesus had spoken, he was convinced that Jesus was the one who had appeared to him the night before. And it wasn't long as he read the scriptures before he became a Christian believer himself. Now he had a problem when he was a leading imam in his country for Islam. And yet now he was forsaking Islam himself and worshipping Jesus and finding complete fulfilment. And his father was a top official in the government and he knew if word got out that his father's son was betraying Islam by becoming a Christian, then his father would be in big, big trouble in the government. The only thing he could do was to leave home and keep out of the way until something worked out. But that wasn't the end because after he had gone, then God started appearing and speaking to other members of the family. His sister woke up one morning and she had a tattoo on her arm and she hadn't put it on. She didn't know what it was. She couldn't read it. It was in letters, not in pictures. She had no idea what it was. She asked numerous people, no one could tell her, until she met a Christian missionary lady who said to her, oh, that's Greek. That's Greek for John 14, 6. No one comes to the Father except through me. With that, she believed. And following her conversion, then God spoke to other people in, in the whole family. And finally, Saha's father became a Christian. And it was then okay for Saha to return back home. And with the combined witness of every member of that influential family, the whole of that town in Sierra Leone became Christian. That's God's work. And God is doing things like that around the world. This is the time. This is the day of salvation. This is the moment of opportunity. If we can just be like those overseas who are willing to give and to risk their own lives and their safety and their well-being and commit themselves to fully uh, extend the kingdom of God. And that's what Gideons are about. We're here to bring the message of Jesus to men, women, boys and girls so that they might be saved. We do it in the first instance by distributing these Bibles and letting God's Holy Spirit speak through his word to touch the hearts of those who read the word. But we do it also by that personal witnessing. And in the uh, folder that you received as you came in, and if you did miss out by any chance on this folder, well, there's plenty more of them just outside, you open it right up, and you'll find right at the end of that folder is a section there which tells you about how you can contribute to the Gideons or how you can be associated with the Gideons. And one of the great things that is available today <coughs> is for people of any age or background or situation in life to become associated with the Gideons as friends of Gideons, either financially or prayerfully or preferably both. And if even just for a moderate, moderate sum you sign up to give regularly and pray for the Gideons, what do they do in return? As soon as they receive that, they send you a copy of a witnessing testament like this for free. <coughs> And as 
I said this is such a wonderful thing to witness to people because there you just open up the back cover and there it is, the scriptures that they can read, ask the person to read the scripture and then say, what does that mean to you? Let them find the meaning out of God's word and it traces it through till they come to find Jesus for themselves. <coughs> but also, Canberra office will send you anyone who joins up in that way for free a copy of Share Jesus Without Fear. Retails at $15, but it's free to every person who joins up as a friend of Gideon's, financial friend of Gideon's, and that is the best book I have ever read on sharing Jesus. It says very simply and plainly, sets out a great strategy for sitting down, talking with people, standing, meeting them, sharing with them, whether they're people you know or whether they're total strangers. <coughs> and as you share with them, letting God speak to them. And the Holy Spirit leads people to himself. And this is the day of opportunity. This is the day of salvation. Every person here could be a disciple maker in that way. If you wanted to uh, take the form, fill it in, send it in, or even just get on your computer and just register with uh, the Gideons, and they will uh, fix it all up from there. It's so straightforward. And why does it work so well when other means of personal ministry and witnessing don't work as well? Simply because it puts the power of the ministry on the actual word of God and on the person receiving it. You're not taking a, a religious message and trying to push it onto someone else. You're simply helping them to see what God says and what that means to them. And then it's God's word that challenges them, not your words, not my words. It's entirely the work of God and his Holy Spirit into the hearts of people, and people do respond. Now is that time of opportunity. And therefore it means also that now is the opportune time for you and me. If we miss our opportunity, what opportunity will come up next? Will we have another opportunity? None of us knows. But now God is speaking to us and giving us opportunities in a personal way which were not there 10 years ago or 20 years ago or even 70 years ago when I first joined this church. Now is the opportunity. Now is the call of God. It's there in his word. Let him speak to you and, and you answer. What does that word of God say to each one of you? I thank you that we've had the opportunity, not only I here now, but also the other Gideon members who have shared in the uh, Cantonese service, James Chen, and then uh, also others will be sharing in the Mandarin service a little later in the year and again this afternoon. So we do thank all those who are involved in the, this church for giving us such a wonderful opportunity. It's a great privilege and we're very grateful for it. Thanks, Wilson. Let's all stand as a response to his words this morning.
everything I want to have is to be known for loving Christ, to build His church and love His bride, and make His name no far. For this cause I live, for this cause. Surrender all for the cause of Christ. All I want have be. I will leave behind for my joy. Sydney, um, of Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We have been instructed to take up the cause of Christ. We all know this. But um, sometimes we, we, we make it harder for us to do it. It's harder for us to do it because we put barriers, we, we are afraid. But we've heard today that this is the time to do it. Um, people are searching for more than the world has provided the materialism 
you know, other searches or answers. We know that people are searching and they're looking for the truth. And we know that we have it. So be encouraged, everyone, that as you step forth out, out of these four walls, that we should be bold in declaring our faith to our friends, our family, to the people that we work with, to the people that we, that we meet. And um, we pr- I pray that, um, that we continue to really tap in, to connect with the Holy Spirit, to really give us that strength, that wisdom, and that power. So let me, uh, let me pray, brothers and sisters, before we, we wrap up today. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may your Holy Spirit continue to really empower us. And may we seek your Spirit to continue to fill us every day, to, to, be, to have the wisdom, to have the boldness, to go out and declare the love that you've given us, Lord. You've saved us, Lord. We've declared our lives for you, Lord. But now, give us that strength, give us that power to go out and share your word, to tell the people of the great love that we've experienced, the great love that they need, because their lives are forfeit otherwise. And Lord, we pray that um, as we you know, continue on in 2019, as we you know, plan ahead as we do the things that we need to do, that we continue to be reminded of what our, our main calling is and, that's to, and our main identity, and that's you, and to go out and share your word and make disciples uh, that make disciples for you, Lord. And I pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Go forth and um, yeah, be a blessing to the world. And uh, this comes to the end of our service today. Um, I know it's been very warm, but um, feel free to continue to stick around and mingle. And um, it'd be great if we can share a meal together as well out in Sydney. So thank you. God bless.